A career in data is a lot like running a marathon. You need to maintain your pace forward through each milestone and look to the finish line as you're stepping into that wonderful leadership role. Now, today's guest, Sri Mukesh, is a finance data analyst at WISE, and he's sharing his journey from engineer to data and the insights that helped fast track his career. Coming up on today's episode... Technical skills for data analysts. The important non-technical skill needed. Advice for data career progression. Sri Mukesh, I'm excited to discuss the skills needed to move forward with a career in data. But first, I'm interested to know a little bit more about your background and how you moved into data. And I know it was uh, from an engineering perspective, right? So yeah, my, my background, I didn't touch about it earlier, but my background has been in engineering. Uh, mechanical engineer as an undergrad, master's also uh, in mechanical and chemical engineering, so energy technologies. Uh, and then uh, worked as a consultant for almost two years. Uh, and then I had a bit of a stint uh, or like a bit of a, t- bit of a period where I was figuring out what I wanted to do, essentially. Uh, just looking at my skill set and uh, looking at the opportunities out there, it just felt uh, like the next best uh, career change to make. Uh, why I like data, like why I wanted to get in data. Like, I've been technical throughout my uh, schooling, my undergrad, and my even my, my first job. Uh, I wanted to still do that, but at the same time, I want to be a bit uh, creative, uh, with my problem solving, when I when I say that, uh, what to do as, as as a data analyst or yeah, what I was doing as data analyst is like when you're given a problem, you think about what what are the things. So when you try to break it down, like think about the insights you want to get, and then uh, and then and then and then that's when the technical elements come in. So you have to like so you have these insights you want to gather to develop an informed opinion. To do that, you need to first develop like data pipelines to essentially get those insights. And then and then based on those insights, then you maybe do further analysis or try and come come up with a decision on what you're gonna do. So so yeah, so like if you think about my experience, I've worked as a consultant, I've been technical, so I felt like it was just like a good mix of them to I'd love to know more about the role of technical skills in data analysis from your perspective. When it comes to technical skills, um, for my role, like uh, you have to be like I think this is the basic. You have to be very good at SQL. SQL should be like your mother tongue, sort of. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, so that's that's the basic. And then, uh, and then it's obviously nice to have uh, Python. You don't have to like build apps or anything. You need to have run Python data analysis. Uh, and then another nice to have this is this is for getting into your first job. It's also like um, having at least like done a couple of projects uh, because for an employer to ensure like you you have some sort of experience, not like fully up trained from scratch. You need to have done some some like pet projects and 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 yeah and uh yeah that's about it and obviously like a key part of data being a data analyst is visualizing results in a way which is easily like understandable by your audience so um so yes and i think when you do all those pet projects you'll be working with multiple tools so yeah so the building experience of that i think these are like the key Tactical elements and and I would also pick DBT. So this is called DBT stands for Data Build Tool, and uh, and this is being like wide, widely used across a lot of companies now. Um, I've spoken to a lot of people from other tech firms uh, as well, and this is just getting bigger and bigger. And the reason why you need to sort of I would say it's, it will give you a good advantage uh, is because. Like you also understand how you need to structure your code base, how you need to like 
uh, build models, what is the right way of building models, it sort of gets that framework in your head. And when, when you like start doing stuff, then you also like follow this framework and yeah, and the companies do it. So say so that'll be like, that. that is, I think that's also essential going forward as well. So what about R compared to Python? I think, I think I've been asked in interviews about R, but personally, I don't think that's, um, that's a requirement. Uh, yeah. So if you've done, so essentially they just want to know if you can code and if you've coded before and they don't really, at least from my experience, no one really requires you to have that. And then I think when it comes to knowing the statistical tools, like it depends again on the role. So if you want to get into a product role, when I say a product role, like doing all those, uh, figuring out what features you want to build and why. And for that, you need to do like the simplest way they do check is that A-B testing. Uh, check if like two features on the side roll out at the same time and then figure out once which one's better. And for that, you need to know but like uh, some like slightly advanced statistics. So, um, so that I think that's the requirement they have for those roles. And other than that, they don't. No one really has a requirement on you need to know R. Uh, the reason behind that is because usually companies try to build their own in-house tooling for experiments. Uh, because it's easier to like well, because once you get bigger and bigger you want to have multiple experiments running across various teams so having an in-house tool is easier to do that as well so that's that makes perfect sense so looking at non-technical skills what are your thoughts on effective communication with stakeholders in my opinion um as a data analyst like you're only as good as the story you can tell uh, that's how I would put it. Uh, and again, uh, I wouldn't stress this. And I can't stress this more because like te- we spoke about technical skills. That is obviously like, like important, but I think, um, the most important thing for you to succeed in this role is, is being able to have this top down approach about problem solving. So like where we touched upon, okay, what's the problem insights I want to gather? And then technical about how you're going to solve and have that and then figure out the audiences you're going to have to communicate to. So let's say, um, going back to the example again, product. So let's say you're building a feature. Uh, So you're going to be working with designers, engineers, uh, people from finance, product managers. So people from finance will be most, most interested in like how much cost is going to, like what is the increase in cost per acquisition of a customer like for, based on this release whereas designers are more worried about whether the flow is actually like optimized the conversion rate and and the same thing with engineers so like you gotta I'm just giving like very high level basic examples but you've got to basically learn to because you're going to be the, the sole go-to person with data uh, you're going to have to know what are the questions the different stakeholders have and answer them. Thanks for sharing. So what are your thoughts on how someone in data can improve and showcase their skills? Yeah, so so I think in my in my uh, in my case the way it's helped is to get into um a good data company like Monzo. So um so the way I used it was so I personally thought fine like I need to get in data I don't have much experience, but I want to. Uh, I want to showcase that I can excel in my role. So the way I thought about it is, okay, fine. Like, let's just do some exploratory data work where you're going to show the skills they're going to be looking for. And the project I took up was, um, yeah, when I'm still an Arsenal fan. I'm actually wearing an Arsenal uh, t-shirt underneath. Um, so 2020. It was the time Arsenal was having a very bad season. So I decided to look at uh, the FPL data and try and figure out what's going on within a team and and try, basically try and explain that with different insights for, based on attack, defense, and then like expected goals and all, all those teeny tiny 
like stats. Um, yeah, and that was quite fun. Uh, and and I think everyone in whenever I spoke about it in my interviews that helped. Um, yeah, and then even now, like now, I sometimes do like I would say voluntary consulting, data consulting work, where let's say someone new comes in, they want to like scrape the the net and then sort of understand trends. Um, yeah, I help them with that. I'm interested to know where you see your career headed and what you see as important steps to achieve what you have in mind. Uh, I so I my my ambition or like my long term goal, hopefully not too long, is to become an entrepreneur. Uh, and and yeah, like I'm a bit risk averse at the moment uh, for for a lot of reasons, but eventually when I get well, yeah, let's say four or five years time, I want to like step out and have a crack at something, yeah, something small and build it up, build it from the ground up. Um, yeah, so that's something I've always wanted to do. Um, and for that, I feel like uh, it'll be good to like slowly transition into a product manager role. And, and, and yeah, like the way I see uh, product managers function like I feel uh, they're not that much different from what a very senior product analyst is expected to do so as, as a good product analyst or a senior one you, you have to learn, you have to go find the problems uh, you have to understand the problems like around you and then learn to size the impact learn to like prioritize them and then pick them and then sort of again like do the analysis which I just spoke about so 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 yeah so I feel like my natural progression would be like get get into more senior role in, in product and then become a product manager and then hopefully start something in my own soon as we wrap up today do you have any other advice for data analysts wanting to improve and move their careers forward uh well I would I would also say like once you are a data analyst like I would try and do a lot lot of lunch and learns, uh, learn from other cool data scientists within your firms. Be like, make sure you engage with them, try and like read other cool pieces of data analysis or data reports they produce and try and learn from that because, um, because yeah, there's so many other cool things which are out there and just try and utilize every other opportunity you can to to let to become like get better at those skills we just spoke about. So the way I would do it is lunch and learns. Uh, that's something I thought I thought it helped me a lot in Monzo. I did I did like three or four of them. Uh, it is it is it, it is nervous at the beginning, but but it pushes you out of your comfort zone. As you said, like technical people are happy to sit behind their computer all day long, but but you gotta like. If you want to be like seen, if you want to like become better at your job as a data analyst, you need to learn to communicate that and and yeah, be do those lunch lens and then be part of them. Continue moving forward in your career marathon, using today's insights to shorten your journey to the finish line. And stay updated by following our guest today on LinkedIn. And if you found this conversation enlightening, Watch this interview with Emily Reed on how product managers' careers are evolving with data products. I want to thank our partners Amplitude for helping produce today's episode. And from me, Ross Webb, until next time, bye for now.